Welcome back, Polytopians. My name's Ferex. They're here to bring you another super sick cast of Polytopia. What I've got for you today is a very unusual game in terms of what we normally show on Poly Champions, and that's because it's a super normal game, meaning it's a 1v1. Not really the focus of Poly Champions, but we do have events like that. This is actually played um, recently. It was played in the Swiss 1v1 tournament. If you haven't joined Poly Champions Discord, you absolutely should. We do have, you know, we have a focus on team games and team gameplay, but we do have events and tournaments. Um, some, I think this one actually had a $100 cash prize. Um, and it was a 1v1 tournament, so super accessible if you're looking to get into that. And even, it really does have something for everyone. Even if you don't play Polytopia, you could still, I guess, hang out, chat, talk about the weather, or sports, or how cool that Ferrixter guy is. I don't know. Anyway, um, let's hop into this game. So, spawning here in the north corner, uh, playing as the Orange Zabasi, this is going to be Thread's main base. And his opponent spawning in the south, rocking the red threads, this is Gato Azul. So lots of colors, lots of threads and threading going on. Both of them opening with a very normal T0 workshop with a farm and then a tech before they capture their first base and a fast explorer. Turn shared fog off so see what each opponent sees. And they get a pretty decent amount of vision. Uh, it might be more typical for go to, uh, to go for a workshop with your first city that you capture. Um, but on these smaller maps, this is a 196 tile Pangea map, you really want to go for that quick explorer because, I mean, you're going to get vision of your opponent right away. And if you don't have vision, you might do something silly like move this warrior onto this village, which would, you know, get that village lost very quickly. And you'd have, you know, a pretty big base discrepancy and, uh, you know, kind of like die. So got to go for that quick explorer on these smaller maps. Gato gets to see that he has a ruin. It is safely within his view and within his base. So he's gonna keep walking, uh, move on, try to get another village before he goes for that ruin. I definitely agree with that decision. It seems like a pretty reasonable thing to do. He could go for it here, but opts to get a little bit more fog. Like he can see his opponent being kind of close to this area. So he wants to get some quick vision up here in case he has to deny a village or something. There is a village up there. So definitely good on there. Moving in, getting defogging that village so he can see that. And he's not really, he could have pulled all the way back to his base, but I guess he wants to build a unit there instead. <coughs> Goes for population growth, makes a rider over there. So got a couple of units out. Thread actually doesn't have any ability to reach those units, so I guess pulling back to there was safe. He would have had to get riding in order to reach him, and his warrior decided not to go south, instead to go for that village. So getting into kind of a standoff over here on the east side. Gato's going to unseize that village. Currently a base disadvantage. Uh, he's at three base, 10 stars per turn, although it looks like he'll likely get the first giant. Meanwhile, Thread is at 14 stars per turn and four base, so he's able to outproduce right now. Uh, if Gato isn't able to either secure a base or get some good efficiency trades, uh, he might end up falling behind. Not able to retreat his rider, so he pushes forward to get a little bit more fog. Just upgrading his bases. Still, it's 12 stars per turn to 14. And Thread going for an early construction. Construction, really very common uh, follow-up tech for Sabasi. <coughs> Gato cons is content to continue macroing on his side. Finally goes for the Ruin. Thread starting off by healing a little bit this turn. 
getting some population growth. Very close to getting a giant, one population short. Still wanted to get that upgrade so that he'd be able to get the, uh, the pop upgrade just for one extra SPT. And Gato making his first giant. First giant on the board. Also goes in for a rider kill. He's going to end up trading this warrior for a rider. It's a really good trade. And makes second giant. So Thread sees that this giant was popped with a monument. So it's obvious that the giant is in one of these places. And he has pretty good view of this. I'm pretty sure he doesn't need to double check. But he double checks anyway. Makes absolutely sure that there's a giant there. Sacrificing his rider. I guess... <laughs> the rider was going to hit something at some point anyway, so sure, why not? I would have held on to it for a little bit longer, maybe tried to chip with the giant first or something. But it's all good, it's whatever. Huge, huge line of riders here standing off against each other. I actually really like this giant position from Gato. He places it here between these two mountains. Um, since these riders aren't able to travel over the mountains, it enables him to move all of these riders forward and he doesn't have to worry about these two riders picking them off. So this effectively is kind of trench warfaring, pushing, uh, pushing Thread back by one tile. Again, sacrificing another rider. Not 100% sure it's what I would have done and I definitely wouldn't have built this rider here right before you pop a giant because the giant is going to push it south. Uh, into range of all of these other riders. Um, not sure about this rider retreat either. Could have pulled back a little bit farther. So Gato's just going to pick off some units here. He makes a road over here, which he really didn't need. I think the idea was to try to retreat this rider. Um, but actually, if he had placed the, ri the road here, then the rider would have been able to travel one to the, one to the west. And then, you know get be on a road so then travel two tiles so he could have retreated back to this uh tile line uh instead he places the road here in the rough and if you're on any kind of tile actually like even if even if you had a rider here right and you placed a road here you can't travel onto a forest and then pick up roads like entering the forest counts as rough terrain unless you already have a uh, a road under you so there actually, there was no way for him to use this road that he built over here. Like he uses it to attack, but yeah, you know, he could have, could have built it under this, uh, under this giant and gotten the same results. Going for more rider kills, pushes all of his units forward. I guess he wants to put a lot of uh, units into Thread's base just so he can absolutely secure this because you know, otherwise you'd have units able to come around over the top. Not sure if he realizes this, but Thread still does not have road tech, so his riders have kind of more limited range. He's instead opting for more base upgrades and more giants. Just trying to use his uh, construction tech to the best that he can. Gato capturing his fourth base, finally evening up the city count. It's now four versus four. I don't agree with this move by Thread moving this giant south. It's into range of this giant. Um, it actually only takes, after one giant hit, it takes six hits from a base unit, so like a warrior or a rider. So he's got all the ingredients to kill this giant down here in vision range. Maybe he's just trying to clear out some of these units. I mean, it definitely does clear out a lot of them. Uh, Gato experiences a significant drop in available firepower. Most of his riders are either killed or taken out of commission, but he does clear, so he does save that village. Uh, well, not save that village, it's not his yet. Turn 16, we're still fighting over this village in the middle. Thread taking out one of Gato's giants. Giant count is still two against two. Well, now three, third giant made in Thread's capital. <clears throat> Gato getting really good efficiency with his riders. They're all injured, but they are still alive. If he's able to heal them up, and it looks like he does kind of have control over this area, if he's able to heal all of these riders up, then that was a tremendously efficient trade, picking up those two uh, giants. 
Not growing up, making more units. So I guess at this point, Thread could buy roads for 12 and make two roads and maybe snipe some of these units, some of these injured uh, riders, but that would be kind of everything that he's buying for that turn. <laughs> Instead, sacking a couple units to soften up this giant. I think if I was going to soften up the giant, I maybe would have used the warrior as one of them. Riders, just you can get a little bit more utility out of them. Like if a warrior hit this before and it was dropped down to 21 HP, I think that's just enough for a rider to tap and survive with one HP and, and escape. So could have sacrificed a warrior instead and then gotten an extra hit with a rider. Um, just kind of a nicer way of softening up the giant. You just kind of want to use riders and get them to retreat retreat and heal when you can. Gato doing a really good job of that. His like six riders down here that were injured have had enough time to heal back up. <clears throat> so org st <laughs> thread going for org strat and diplomacy. Um, seemingly out of the blue. He had a lot of money saved up so I was kind of expecting roads or something to come out of that and, uh, you know, trying to get more efficient trades or more giants. Um, Threads decides, no, no, he wants to cause some chaos, <laughs> goes for the cloaks. Gato able to clear up this base, and honestly, just on paper right now, it's looking very, very Gato favored. Like, Gato is ahead on uh, base count, and he is ahead on Econ right now. Going for a siege up here also. Thread moving around. He makes kind of a strange choice with is uh, moving this cloak next to this um, warrior. Like, if uh, we look at Gato's vision, he has, like, you know, as soon as the cloak moves next to this, you get this little eye icon on the top. So if Gato was watching while this was being played or watched the replay very carefully, he might see this eye icon pop up and that will tell him that there's a cloak in one of these two tiles, either the north or east tile. So since his very, since Thread's very next move after that was going to be um, killing the the warrior with a uh, with a giant. I'm not sure why he didn't just kill with giant first and then move the cloak after. Tiny little thing on on you know movement order, but uh, it would have eliminated the possibility of Gato seeing that cloak. So you definitely want to be mindful about your not only your attack order when killing something, but just when you're moving your units around. You don't want to reveal more information than you have to. Gato going for an attack here. Um, if he had used these back riders to take out these front uh, riders of Thread, he actually had enough. He would have been able to siege this base. Um, kind of didn't get turn order, and I guess he wanted to put this uh, this rider into a uh, into a port because apparently uh, God has decided that now is the time to start building a navy and encircling thread uh, on the on the outskirts of the map. Thread positioning both of his uh, cloaks around, looking like he's going for a double attack. I'm not sure how he's planning to get through this giant, but hopefully for him, Gato will move it. And uh, yeah, he couldn't move it to here because that's next to uh, Thread's giant. Sailing and reveals another island base. So uh, Gato definitely going to be able to capture that island base. It's about to be four base versus six. And Thread was kind of low on units, but he manages to make six of them right now. Just build them in Gato's territory and using Gato's money. Uh, again, if you're not, like, super familiar with cloaks, when they hit a base, they do the damage that a warrior hit would do. They steal the income from that base. Um, and they also spawn daggers equal to the base's level, up to five. So he's able to get those hits. Suddenly, um, the income is kind of lopsided towards threat now. And also, he manufactured, like, eight units in the last turn, ten units in the last turn. Whereas Gato's only actually able to make five. So if he's able, if, if Thread is able to land cloaks continuously and get a nice huge stream of units produced, um, 
could actually be kind of devastating for Gato. More cloaks being made. Gato moves in, was definitely hoping to find a cloak in, in that main base. Instead, finds a warrior thread too smart knowing what would happen. Whoa, missed an explorer. Explorer taken from a ruin? Obviously, obviously, right? It's gonna ignore the one lighthouse, but it even goes out of its way to try its hardest to ignore the other lighthouse, only forced to go back because it ran out of other fog tiles. But yes, obviously, the, uh, <laughs> the explorer wants very badly to avoid the lighthouse if it possibly can. That's not like a game mechanic or anything, it's just... That's just happenstance, right? Explorers, they are absolutely allergic to lighthouses. Do everything in their power to avoid them when they can. This ruin spawning a, uh, a rammer unfortunately pushes Gato's scout next to the, uh, the coast. So that very expensive unit probably going to be lost. Thread landing another cloak. Another three daggers popping up. Getting very crowded on Gato's side of the map. He goes for a siege, sacrificing this rammer to get a, uh, a vet warrior onto this base. And I mean, he does have vision of a lot of this. And yeah, there actually are not enough units for Thread to unsiege. So it looks like Thread's going to lose that base. Especially if some of these if some of these cloaks are taken out, and I mean, I guess I, I guess Gato actually kind of has to take some of them out because he has to unsiege this base. He goes, he chips down this this uh, this cloak down to six. Huge cloak hit on Gato's most expensive base. Spawns five daggers. He's not able to save this base. Actually, using this. Uh, 6 HP dagger to hit this was actually kind of a mistake. Like, you could have tapped this instead, and that would have enabled you to uh, to siege with a defender, or would have allowed got, um, Thread to siege with a defender. Would have been a much harder clear, especially with all of these other excess units around here. Instead, Gato's gonna clear out all of these, easily clear this base, and he's Going to Jai Siege, Giant Siege, Thread's West Base. Thread's now double sieged. He has to save these bases. Gato clearing up these units, capturing its seven base to three. Things are looking very dire for Thread. But we land another dagger hit. We spawn six more units. He unsieges his expensive base and sieges the base that he just lost and the other base. So now three bases of threads, three of Gato's bases are sieged and Gato's got four bases lying around. Thread continuing to move forward. Gato gets a snipe on this cloak. That is huge. If he can just cut the cloaks off, just buy himself a little bit of breathing room, he might be able to stabilize. Gets another lighthouse. He's not able to unsiege this base, but he is able to pop a giant, so that's what he's gonna do. If another cloak hits this base now, it's always gonna be spawning five daggers just like this other base. He's barely able to hang on to his main center base also. Thread finally taking roads on turn 26 and has 42 stars left over. I'm going to point out that he could buy basically anything he wanted right now. Like, if he, if he wanted knights, he could buy chivalry. But the problem for threads is actually just that he doesn't have anywhere safe to produce units. Able to get another siege, this time with a defender. Gato running very low on units. Thread kind of low on... Um... Well, bases, I guess. <laughs> Recaptures his base. Gato not able to clear out this defender, but he is does put a giant next to the base, so the giant will be able to help clear next turn. Not enough for this turn, but he's just barely able to afford to get another giant onto his base. Not really in terms of um, affording the, uh, the 
the star, well, he barely affords the stars for it, but just that base is running out of resources that you can use. Like, he can never pop another giant out of that base. That base is full. Thread's trying to stabilize, getting one last cloak up. If that cloak is able to land, he can start pushing Gato back. Otherwise, Gato starts to clear out the rest of the daggers, and he's starting to advance. Also, taking control of the water is making it difficult for Thread to make units two, three of his bases are going to be in range of uh, Gato's navy. So if he's going to progress, he's got to get something done in the center of the map, and he's got to get it done fast. Archers chipping down giants, defenders surrounding his own cloak. He's got to get that unit in there, and it's kind of hard for Gato to get in with the units that he has. He moves this warrior in, he sees that the cloak is there, kills with this giant, he knows now which tile it is, like it ruled out that tile, there's definitely a cloak here. Can he make it? Very much so. <laughs> Gato clears out that last cloak. <clears throat> Cleans out a bunch of the other units. Giants advancing all around. The navy has him surrounded, and with that last, with that last cloak taken out, um, nothing really left for Threads, and Thread resigns the game. <clears throat> also, here on the last turn, um, Gato finally making use of math and getting his catapult. Uh, I just want to go back really quick to actually show you that there was actually an easier clear for Gato um, here on turn 36. Like, you can't reach this cloak, right? But that was definitely but that was definitely the goal. Um, he could have actually taken org, or organization for 10. Um, I'm not sure if the push direction, default push direction for this would be east or southeast, but if it was southeast, if he block southeast, it goes east. So what he could have actually just done is, is move a warrior down here to this tile, take org, fruit, and then make just a level one um, windmill. That would have made a giant and pushed this warrior this way. And then he could have just walked one and killed this cloak like that. So there was an easier clear. Um, but you know, when you're playing 1v1s, uh, sometimes you're not really playing as meticulously as you are with 2v2s because you know, in 2v2s, someone else is there watching with you. Uh, in 1v1, yeah, sometimes you kind of just you kind of just YOLO your moves, and that's totally fine. Anyway, this was a really fun game for me to watch. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you haven't joined the Poly Champions Discord server, don't forget to do that. We've got lots of tournaments and events and fun stuff, and like I'm there and I'm pretty cool too, you know. If you're into that, you know, whatever. Um, otherwise, yeah, don't forget to do the things you know you're supposed to do at the ends of videos. You know you're sp what you're supposed to do. Just do the things. I don't need to tell you specifically. Do the things you're supposed to do, and um, yeah. I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> Thanks for watching.